Hello dear students. So here we are today. Uh, we are going to talk about the third unit of this particular, sorry, third topic of this particular unit number three. And we are going to discuss on uh, gradient of single neuron. So that's our first step towards actually moving on to gradient of uh, fully connected network. So before we actually move into gradient of fully connected network, we will be talking on what is the gradient of a single neuron. So if you understand this single neuron, neuron point uh, carefully, then you will understand about the fully connected network very easily. So, So we are talking on gradient of single neuron. So for this particular thing, now for a neuron model which is using a sigmoid activation function. So typically we are going to use uh, any activation function which is suitable as per your application. But for ease of understanding for this particular model, I have chosen a single neuron model. And for that the activation function that I have chosen is a sigmoid activation function. Okay, so you all know how a sigmoid activation function is written, right? So sigmoid activation function, how it is written, uh, you have got uh, output O of 1. Now why am I giving this 1? O of 1 represents the output of first layer. Okay, so since I am just talking on one single neuron, but still the representation matters, right? So that's why I have written here O of 1. Now what is happening when you create a model you have got input let us say that particular input is x of that particular network now this particular uh, neuron will have its input will have its associated weight will have its associated bias correct so all these things three three things will be available for this particular neuron Apart from this, what it is going to do, it is going to have its input, it is having its weight, it is having its bias and it is going to uh, do a form a linear relationship. How it is going to form a linear relationship, you all know, right? You have weight into x and plus you, you have bias, correct? Always, there is a linear model which you form it. After that, you pass it through a suitable activation function. So here the activation function that we are giving is a sigmoid. So that's how it is coming as a sigmoid. And then finally out of it what you get is an output which I am calling it as OF1. So this is how we are going to build a single neuron model. So here as I am as I'm writing here the superscript of the variable represents the number of layers. Now what is our uh, need? This is our predicted output. Okay, you already have an actual output say Y in some textbooks or here we are going to take it as T. Okay, so this is our actual prediction which is already present for your training data. So for an input X, the actual output value is T and what you have predicted after passing it through a single neuron model is O. Okay, so what is your aim? Your aim is to find out the difference between these two because you always want an optimum solution. You will get an optimum solution for your model when you have both these T and O same or else there is this minimum difference between them otherwise it's not an optimum model. So always you want to find out an optimal model by calculating the difference between these two and minimizing that difference. So now our aim is to calculate the loss of this particular model. That is nothing but the difference between the actual value and predicted value. Now there are different ways that we go for. One of them is mean squared error loss function which I already discussed so many times. Right. So I am going to take up a mean square error function. Let's say I call that loss function as L. So what are we going to do? We are going to find out the partial derivative of this loss function. Why? Because we always want to know the gradient of the loss function in order to obtain optimization. 
so we have to see the direction in which this loss function is minimum so that is you calculate the gradient of this loss function what it is dependent on on the weight parameter that's why you will do partial derivation why partial derivation because apart from weight there are other parameters like bias also available it had there been only one parameter you would simply write as d direct differentiation because there are multiple parameters and out of it you are calculating weight parameter with respect to the available parameters and you are taking only one parameter of weight and calculating its gradient with respect to L that is the reason partial derivative. So our aim is now to calculate do L that is loss function derivative with respect to the weight parameter J1. So you can see how am I writing here the notation it is WJ1. So what is this WJ1 we are just going to see. Okay. So one second I will just erase this for you and then we quickly move on to our next slide. So, so when I move on to this next slide I was talking on to the notations for you. So how am I writing these notations? So you can see here, I was writing as WJ1. Sometimes I may write as J1 of 1. So what does this 1 in bracket represents? It represents the number of layers. Now what does this J represent? The number of input nodes are represented by J. Okay, And the weight connection from the input of jth node to the output O1 that we are taking here is represented as WJ11. So this is output part where it is connected to, where it is coming from is J. So J is the jth node input, one is the output that you are connecting it to. And this superscript, okay, sometimes in uh, actually speaking, the superscript should be like this. Okay, so if it comes like this, this will represent the number of layers to which the weight parameter belong. That is the first layer here. One here responds to, to what output number it is going to connect. And the first one, this J is responding to the input node from where it is coming. Okay, so you must remember all these things when you are uh, learning. So these notations are important. That's why I'm writing it here. And another thing is uh, the variable before the activation function sigma is called Z1. You will understand it more better here if I tell, if I just show you. Give me a moment. So you can see here in this there are so many inputs. I am sorry. So in this you can see there are so many inputs which are coming over here and I am talking on and I am talking on this jth node. Okay. So when I am talking on this jth node you can see uh, to this single neuron that is present over here. Single neuron that is present over here you have wj1 that is coming that I was just discussing it to you. And similarly from first node you have w11. From second node you have W21, from Jth node you have J1 and if you have total number of inputs as J then you have capital J here coming. So anyways, so what you have here is finally you create a uh, in between variable called as Z. So what is this Z? This Z gives you the linear relation. You know I always when we draw this neuron you always put it into two halves right. One is where these inputs are coming X1, X2 and these are their individual weights that are coming. Now where they are going? Going to the first output that's why here again one I will write. Second weight first output, jth weight first output and all of these should form a linear relationship first which we call it as Z that is given as Z is equal to the weight into X multiplication and then followed by an addition of bias. Now after this you have a logical function right. So what is this logical function over here? The logical function here that we have taken is a sigmoid function correct. So you have this sigmoid function where you will get an you are writing here the output. So this is after the sigmoid function what you get is an output O1 
and that's you can see that for the sigmoid function z is the input o1 is the output i hope you're clear now now if this particular diagram is clear and notations are clear then we can very easily understand what is going to happen next okay so now what i am trying here is you know uh, we are we are taking input we are using linear relationship and we are denoting that input to the logical function or activation function as z which is this and then the output out of the activation function is got o so now as i told you this is predicted output there is always an actual output for this particular input value which we are calling real value t so you always want to find out the error between this predicted value and this true value so that is given by this error so this is a loss function so you will choose a typical loss function and you will move forward so let us see now what are we going to have it in our next step i hope this particular slide is clear for you so i am now moving on to my next step so my next step is to calculate this error function so you can see here i have calculated the loss function which is nothing but my mean squared error function so you can see it is nothing but half of i'm sorry so you can see it is nothing but half of um, the predicted output minus actual output also it's like this half o1 minus t the whole square okay so now among them see uh, t is the real label value half is actually a scaling so it will not going to affect the direction of the gradient or the slope calculation is going to be very simple this is my loss function i am going to calculate gradient for it how do i calculate gradient by calculating differentiation here partial differentiation because i am considering single parameter of weight so when i consider this what i'll get is half into 2 into o1 minus t into do by do w j1 of o1 minus i'll get zero here so what i'll get here is 2 and 2 cancel so what i get here is o1 minus t and here what i'll get is do o1 by do w j1 so this is what is my partial derivation right now after you have calculated this partial derivation of with respect to this weight parameter we are going to see next what is there uh, for us so when we see this we are now trying to typically rearrange it in terms of what all activation function that we have got so we considered that our activation function is actually i told you z is the input to activation function sigmoid and o1 is the output so i can write here o1 is nothing but sigma of z1 correct and we already i calculated the gradient of activation functions for you and sigma ka gradient was sigma into 1 minus sigma correct so what i am going to do simply in my previous equation i am going to in place of this only this okay i am re, uh, substituting it with its gradient so you all know that uh, you got output when you gave z as an input to sigma so you are giving it as sigma z1 1 minus sigma z1 i hope it is clear similarly wherever there is sigma of z1 i am going to replace it with this particular equation so that our notation is simpler that's it so what you get is o1 minus t and in place of this sigma of z1 you again get o1 sigma of z1 you get o1 so that everything is in the proper fashion of output only now this particular value is nothing but your xj so when you replace it you get this particular equation so that's what is your pro, uh, you know partial derivation so you can see that uh, with this particular formula uh, i mean with this particular expression the partial derivative of error uh, to the weight wj1 is only related to its output to its true value which is your actual value predicted value actual value and input so you can say that it is not at all dependent on any other parameter except these three it is not dependent on weight it is not dependent on whatever any other uh, parameter that you have got it is only dependent on actual result predicted result and the input that is given so that is our inference from this uh, gradient of single neuron 